The first step in completing the square is to check to see if you should even bother completing the square. And that's done by saying to yourself, is half of b, well, what's half of 18? 9. What's 9 squared? 81. Is half of b squared already sitting here? No. If not, this process kicks in. And here's how it works. You leave the x squared minus 18x. You add a perfect square. You get why I'm, gonna use, I'm using a little square there? Because you're going to add a perfect square. And right away, subtract it. If you think that's dumb, it's not. That's why you're allowed to do this. Because you can add and subtract the same thing and not change the value. Don't forget the little 100. It gets bumped to the very end. Aw. Ready? Remember that 81 we just mentioned? That's the complete the square number. That little box gets filled in by half of 18 squared. What is it? 81 minus 81 plus 100. For now, the fact that this was negative, this 18, didn't come into play yet. All right? It will in the next step when I create my perfect square part and my leftover part. The perfect square part goes in parentheses and gets squared. That's going to be the x minus 8 part of the vertex form. All right? See this x squared? Make it x squared like that. See this 81? Make it 9 squared. See this minus sign? If that's a minus sign, that needs to be a minus sign. Right? That's the rule there. That's minus, that's minus. And finally, we have the leftover part on the end. You can either ask yourself what negative 81 plus 100 is, or you could ask yourself what 100 minus 81 is. Positive 19? So there's a plus 19, and we're done. We've completed the square. We're in vertex form. Where's the vertex? Yep. I say to myself, is that left or right? Right. That helps me remember it's positive 9. Right 9, up 19. We will do part B and another example later this week.